Welcome to the highlights of the Benson Hedges World Series Cup clash at the Gabba, Australia and the West Indies. And what a match it is going to be. A tremendous crowd in, wonderful tension and atmosphere here at the Gabba today. A crowd of around about 20 to 22,000, even before a ball was bowled. The points table in the Benson Hedges World Series Cup, West Indies have six, Australia two, Sri Lanka none, and Australia desperate for two points today to stop West Indies going to too big a lead. The team changes for today's match. Desmond Haynes, after that leg injury suffered in Hobart, comes back into the side. Thelston Payne goes out. And for Australia, Jeff Lawson comes in, and so too Steve Rickson, who's replacing Wayne Phillips. And Geoffrey Lawson comes back into the side for Carl Rackham. And the teams, Australia, Alan Border, the skipper, and Rodney Hogg, vice-captain. Then Woodhill, Ditch, Vessels, Boone, O'Donnell, the young all-rounder from Melbourne. Rickson, Bennett, Lawson, McDermott. And Greg Ritchie, once again, is 12th man for Australia. The West Indians, with Clive Lloyd skippering and Viv Richards, the vice-captain, have Desmond Haynes and Richie Richardson, Larry Gomes, then Logie Dujon, Marshall Holding, Garner, Davis, and Roger Harper is 12th man. There's a buzz around the ground with the first ball of the day. It's bowled by Marshall. Wood is taking strike. And your commentators, Ian Chappell and Bill Lurie. And it's Malcolm Marshall coming from the Dolce Street end. Quite a strong appeal there from Malcolm Marshall and the wicketkeeper. But uh, umpire Stephen Randall absolutely unmoved. Very nervous Graham Wood. This ball swinging down the leg side. Confident appeal from in front of the wicket. Not a lot of support from behind. Finds the edge and the first runs for Australia this morning coming to Hilditch. The gates were opened at half past seven this morning. Big crowd here at the Gabba. And the West Indies regarded as very important to stop as many runs as possible in those first 15 overs. Taking the edge and flying down to third man. But short of Michael Holding. That ball really bouncing from Malcolm Marshall. Oh, and that's a brilliant delivery. Beats Wood and the keeper once again. Tom Garner did that to uh, Jeffrey Dujon yesterday. He's done him again. Oh, and that's a good delivery. Once again, it lands safe, though, and Malcolm Marshall certainly isn't having a lot of luck. He's letting go with some very nasty deliveries, and Hilditch is in a bit of trouble, I think. Oh, and that's a good delivery but still Marshall is out of luck when he finds the edge it carries over the top of the slips and beating the outside edge on that occasion with a magnificent delivery the yellow catch him but it goes wide of the man at backward square leg and also beats Michael Holding at fine leg that's the first boundary from the bat this morning. None for 21. Yes. And one in the pit of the stomach. Could be trouble. Logie coming in very quickly there from point. And that's one leg by. What a brilliant piece of work by Gus Logie. He's like a whippet. In he comes. It's going to be very, very close. Where's Graham Wood? Good decision. Yep. Richards. Oh, and if he'd hit him, it was trouble. But instead, four overthrows for Australia. So a quick five there to Andrew Hilditch, but perhaps a little fortunate. That was a score, but it was a lot of pressure doing it. That's a lovely shot. That's the best shot we've seen so far. Really got into that very quickly, middle of the bat, and put it away for four. Well, 
squared him right up. Cry of anguish from Wood. He was in the wrong position for the shot. Played right across it, trying to play it on the onside. placed and it could go it does in fact go all the way well played didn't look from the time it left the bat that it would have gone to the boundary but it was so well placed and timed that it got all the way Ozzy well that's a very confident appeal down the leg side there was some noise Dujon reckoned it was bat umpire Randall reckoned it was not difficult for the umpire to pick up because he would have been unsighted he probably wouldn't have seen that contact seemed to be a little bit of noise there on our replay also Dujon was extremely confident none for 49 and that's gone so Hilditch goes caught at first slip by Joel Garner usual you find Garner there Davis picks up a wicket and if it was a mistake by umpire Randall the last over when there was that confident appeal down the leg side it hasn't cost the West Indies any just the one slip and Andrew Hilditch picked him out and a good grab at first slip by Garner going into those big hands of his and good bowling by Winston Davis picking up the wicket of Andrew Hilditch for 19 in Australia in the 16th over one for 49 Michael Holding bowls now to Vessels it's well played he's got that one away nicely square of the wicket so Vessels now off the mark oh, well bowled that one did swing a bit nicely played too by Wood straight down the ground Haynes will cut it off down a deep mid off that is lovely cricket there a well pitched up delivery that swung a little bit would allow it to come right up to him before driving it down the ground oh he's dropped him well that would have been a good catch it was played away down towards third man would opening the face of the bat a big deflection and Jeffrey Dujon diving away got a hand to it but couldn't make a catch so with a score on one for 75 Clive Lloyd has decided it's time to bring Viv Richards into the attack. I'll spend a bit of time in the field here because it's pretty important they get it right and it's going to be very interesting to see now how these Australians go about dealing with Vivian Richards. And it's a big appeal there for court behind. He's gone. Wood out straight away off the bowling of Vivian Richards. A good catch that by Dujon. He was trying to run it away down to third man I think. Got a big edge and was immediately given out by Steve Randall. Yes, Wood there, finding that ball just holding its own outside the off stump, looking for that deflection through the slipped area, and only succeeding in getting a top edge to the ball, and it went straight into the hands, slotted into the hands of Geoffrey Dujon. Good catch, not a big deflection. The second Australian hit down for 77, Wood out for 38. certain amount of pain attached to that shot by Alan Border. Just think how much worse it would have been if he'd been hit by Michael Holding or Joel Garner. And Lloyd is giving him the count. To put him down for the compulsory eight count. Feeling from the old boy. Perhaps not so much to the old boy. That's beautifully placed. That's where they won't want to bowl to get the vessels. You can bet your life Lloyd has told Winston Davis not to bowl anything there.
Lawrence with the 90. Malcolm Marshall at deep mid on. Miss Fields. And Vessels takes the opportunity for an extra run. Clive Lloyd. Oh, yes. Well, he might be 40 years of age, but it doesn't stop him pulling off one of the better runouts we're likely to see this summer. Took him a moment or two to get started. When he did, he was really motoring, and Borden knew he was in trouble there. That was confirmed for him just a second or so later. It's three for 97. This was 25, Boone on four. Australia, three for 107. LBW and Vivian Richards has struck again. David Boone has gone. And I suspect that might have been his uh, little swinger, the quicker ball, just giving the batsman the chance to go for the pull, and it hurries on. And that is absolutely plumb. That would have struck middle stump about uh, an inch below the black markings on the stump there. Boone out for four, beaten by Richards. Slightly quicker delivery that hurried on. Four for 107. Quite a task for him, four for 107 in the 31st over. Wicket. As he's a marvellous all round cricketer, uh, Viv Richards. Well, what a magnificent catch. It was a good piece of fielding by Roger Harper. Just have a look at Vivian Richards. That was really fired in, going 100 miles an hour. Well, a baseballer would be delighted with that if he had a glove on. It's a couple of vessels on strike on 28. Gets away nicely. Richards, the fieldsman. Thirty-two overs bowled as four for one hundred and fifteen. Into his eighth over, two for twenty-four. Yeah. Simon O'Donnell trying to hit down the ground succeeds, going for the second. Gomes the fields and bad throw. Five Lloyd backs up. I have to put some pressure on the West Indian fieldsman. to mid wicket Richardson the fieldsman always a tough customer to try and get runs off but and Simon O'Donnell gets that with the top edge down to Gomes going for the second throws good because big striding young man just made it Dujon not really in the game there for a second Good return from Gomes. Barry Gomes was probably the weakest arm in the West Indies lineup than anyone else. Simon O'Donnell probably would have been on his way back, just making his ground. 40 overs completed. Change in the commentary team. It's Tony Gregg and Tony Cozy. Thanks, Paul. The Australians have got themselves into a little bit of a hole here. 150, or should we say one short of 150. And well, that's away through the field. Down to the third man boundary for four of Richards. Up things a little bit. But with ten overs to go, they really need to score another hundred runs to be in the hunt in this game. It's the first boundary for 17 overs. And that's what they need now. Plenty of boundaries. He's out. Hit it straight to extra cover. Gus Logie fielding there. Makes the catch. That was hit very firmly by Vessels. He's very good in that area. And it was right off the middle of the bat, but straight to the fieldsman. He really cracked that. 
hit it very hard indeed, but straight to Logie, and it knocked the little fellow over, and Richards very pleased with the wicket. It's a good catch by Logie, knocked right over there, Vessel's on his way, 5 for 153. Here's Garner now bowling to O'Donnell. Yeah. That's nicely played. He'll be looking for the second here. Gomes' arm's not that good. He's coming back. And he'll get back quite comfortably. Marshall to Rickson. No. Oh, there's a terrible mix up here. If Lloyd hits his out. Oh, and he's done it again. What a fieldsman. He doesn't often miss those stumps. That's twice today that uh, Lloyd has achieved direct hits. And as a result of that mix-up, Simon O'Donnell is outrun out. Second time today for the Super Cat. Turning the hands of the clock back about 15 years when he was one of the most accurate throwers in the game, but he still is. Very close indeed, but O'Donnell not quite getting home. So six for 160. Murray Bennett. We've sent back straight away, and again the stumps hit, this time by Logie. Well, this is madness by the Australians. Simon O'Donnell, O'Donnell was going so well, there was no necessity at all for him to be run out as it was for the sake of a single and still plenty of overs remaining and he's almost run out first ball no! oh and Rickson's coming there's a big no this is out by Miles yes he is well there's never any doubt about the fact that one of these two are going to run themselves out and on that occasion Rickson deciding to run despite the fact that Bennett was stuck to the crease down the other end what a terrible mix-up. This is very bad cricket by the Australians. In the past two or three overs, there's been all sorts of confusion. Yes, no, and it wasn't a good return this time by Lloyd. Luckily, the man he was returning to had an arm about three miles long and could haul it back in. So seven for 162. This is the 45th over. If they go, and if he hits, this will be close. Oh, that would have been out. Well, that would have been the fourth. I reckon he was a yard out of his ground as the stumps just missed on the ball from Lloyd. Well, he's hit two previous ones. Didn't have quite as long a look this time as he had on the two previous occasions. And he missed, although he didn't miss by much. Lawson just managed to get home. Nice shot. Beautiful shot by Lawson. Garner hangs his head. He obviously didn't want to bowl it outside off stump and uh, it got away, but it was a beautifully placed shot by Lawson. No one covering the point boundary, and so he gets four. One's in the air and it's caught. Obviously, it didn't come off uh, the bat, off the arm, but he's given him out. I've got the feeling the finger came up there, and this uh, he was making a gesture of some other sort. Now he's been given out. Lawson, obviously, in a lot of agony there, the ball having hit him on the arm. And uh, they did turn for the single. Have a look at it. Where did it come from? It was a bloody good catch by Dujon. Typical athleticism by Dujon flying through the air. Rarely took off. Now, where did that come from? Lawson suggested it hit the forearm. He's rubbing it as he comes in. And look at that catch by Dujon. Was in the air for a long time, but he had to change his direction and leap to get it. Eight for 171. Marshall to Murray Bennett. Yes, he's got him. 
must have taken a little nod of the head there from Steve Randall, who's down at the Stanley Street end. He watched the ball and uh, was taken just above the ground by Gus Logie. Well, what a good return it has been for little Gus Logie to the international scene. He is a superb fielder and coming forward and just taking that ball inches from the ground and the nod of the head from umpire Steve Randall hasn't been in the big time for some time, Logie. And coming back with two catches now, Bennett out for three, it's nine for 173. Welcome Marshall to McDermott. Lloyd dives and doesn't quite get there. Haynes comes around from mid off and they collect two. Yeah. Oh, he did well there. He backed away and he's got that away down to the deep extra cover boundary. Pretty good shot for number 10. McDermott backing away slightly. The ball fired in very full and in the end he did well. Well hit, straight down the ground. Big bounce there and uh, cut off by Michael Holding. So one to go now in this Australian innings. 191 on the board. That's what's been needed, straight hitting. They're going to run. It's down to Joel Garner. Will there be another run out? Yes. There is. Well, they had to run for that one. It was the last quarter of the innings. And so McDermott run out, trying to gather for Australia just one more desperate run. Clive Lloyd would be very happy with the way things have gone for the West Indies. It really has been a very polished performance by them in the field. Well, the Australians really will have to bowl and feel like tigers if they're to get out of that. 191 is not much of a target. What a great performance by the West Indians. That's one of the best efforts I've ever seen from a team using their out cricket in limited overs cricket. 191 for Australia. A top score, Kepler Vessels, 47 from 75 balls. Nowhere near scoring a run off every ball faced. 25 to Simon O'Donnell, who is shaping all right as the all-rounder in the side. 38 to Graham Wood and 19 to Hildish. They put on 49 for the first wicket, but after that it was only Vessels and O'Donnell 46 from 10 overs who were able to push the game away from the West Indians. The bowling figures for the West Indies, Marshall one for 42, Garner one for 33, Holding none for 31, Davis one for 37 bowled pretty well today and so too did Richards in his new style alternating swing with spin. Three for 38 in 10 overs and no maiden and three run outs there or three assisting run outs to Clive Lloyd. We pick up the West Indian run chase now in the very first over, Jeff Lawson is bowling to Desmond Haynes. No runs on the board at this moment. Well, Haynes off the mark. That one going down towards the square leg boundary. They'll probably go for three. Richie Richardson very quick between the wickets. Here's Desmond Haynes off the mark, and he's a pretty useful player. He scored against Australia in one-day cricket. Four hundreds out of the five most recent matches. He's hit that one down to square leg. And uh, Hogg getting himself in a terrible tangle there. And perhaps he should have taken a punt and come forward and tried and made the catch. Let's have another look at it. Perhaps that's uh, a little severe. I think you're a bit, bit of a tough man, Tony. That one was clipped away and Rodney Hogg caught a little bit in two minds. Had a few problems probably picking it up because that went like a rocket down there. And that's it away beautifully. It's a short, wide ball. And Desmond Haynes giving it some treatment just outside off stump there. Not a very good ball from Lawson. It's in the air, but it's going down to third man and nicely cut off down there. Fielded's the fielder. And uh, what good fielding it was. Oh, well, Lawson has just taken one on the shin there as the ball was thrown down the wicket. I think he was trying, that's Rickson trying to catch 
Haynes unawares down that end. All he did was do some damage to the shins of Lawson. But definitely some inconsistency in terms of the bounce out there at the moment, especially from Hogg's end. It's in the air, just wide of the slip cordon and down for four. Well, that's what happens when you really go after them. Perhaps fourth slip may have caught that. It's not often in one-day cricket you get a fourth slip. But an orthodox nick there from an attempted drive. Oh, and again through the slip cordon. This time, I think Boone may just have got a finger to it. It was a little bit late going. It was quite wide and went very quickly. Boundary seeming to come thick and fast through that slip order, but David Boone just a little slow then, getting across to that. Went down on one knee. Oh, well played. He has smashed that through the gap. There's no way in the world that if uh, he hit that, it wasn't going to go for four. Hog to Richardson. Oh, that's a good shot. Straight over the top of Rodney Hogg's head. Having been relatively economical, all of a sudden the wheels are falling off now. That was beautifully played. It's a good shot. Picked the gap on that occasion. And Rodney Hogg much too short at the moment. O'Donnell now to Haynes. O'Donnell also too short. And Haynes really is playing with gay abandon. Loves these one-day internationals, Desmond Haynes. West Indies 50 coming up in the 11th over. And a double change for Australia. It's Craig McDermott from the Vulture Street end. He replaces Rodney Hogg. Hogg with five overs, one maiden, none for 22 against his name. And he's got him. First ball, Richie Richardson edges a shortish delivery back onto his middle stump. And the Brisbane crowd delighted as the Queensland youngster picks up a wicket with his first ball. Dragged it back on from way outside the off stump and he isn't happy not the best of deliveries from Craig McDermott to start with but he seems to have Richie Richardson in some difficulty this season 1 for 50 in the 12th over Gomes takes strike now to McDermott oh he's got him as well Larry Gomes has dragged one back on. So, Craig McDermott with a, a couple of Puff the Magic drag-ons. And there's the second Puff the Magic drag-on. And that's all that these spectators here at the Gabba needed to bring them alive. West Indies coasting home, apparently, a very good start, replying to 191, and two wickets in the very first over for McDermott, and the crowd is back alive, and it's 2 for 50. Well, it's great to be a Queenslander, but the, uh, it's a long time since Viv Richards was considered one of those when he played for Queensland. Out, uh, giving him a bit of a raz as he came to the wicket at the moment their favourite is Craig McDermott who's just picked up his second wicket and this is first over An inside edge from Larry Gomes back onto the stumps and that time it hits leg stump song's almost like the MCG roar in the heyday of Dennis Lilly with Craig McDermott charging in. Two wickets in his very first over. Yeah, that's a good delivery. Plenty of bounce there. And a double wicket maiden to Craig McDermott has really changed the face of this game.
Simon O'Donnell is going to continue from the Stanley Street end. He must give McDermott good support here. Oh, and that's got to be close. Oh, Simon O'Donnell asking the question. Steve Randall answers in the negative. Looked very close. I had the suspicion that there was a little bit of bat on to it. I think there were two sounds, but it was from one pad into the next, and the, that was what the two sounds came from. It's a nice outswinger there from O'Donnell. Once again, Alan Border getting a finger to it. Those fingers really have taken a pounding this season. Border in trouble again. Not easy for a young fellow. He's only 19. All the excitement, all these things happening to him. Close. Would have been the natural angle, taking it down the leg side, but only by a whisker. Here, after the 16th over, Winston is well ahead, having lost two wickets instead of the Australian one wicket, and has scored 64. Very far away from being the third player to play on. Just went past, stumped by a fraction of an inch. Must be gone. Yes, it is. Simon O'Donnell has got through. Rodney Hogg, the catch. Miscued, almost looked as though it came from the bottom of the bat, and that's well done. Young O'Donnell. He's only in a support role there, and he's trying his heart out. And his efforts have brought him his first wicket in international cricket. As Desmond Haynes tries to turn that ball on the leg side, obviously the ball moved, leading edge, lobbed to mid on. Three for 74. Lloyd taking strike. O'Donnell is the bowler. One shot for four. And Lloyd's away already. Three for 78 in 19. It's in the air for four. Actually quite well played by Richards. There's nothing hurried about that. He waited on it and just flicked it away quite deliberately in the air. And you can gauge the pace of young Craig McDermott by the fact that the ball just bounced once and then flew into the crowd. And that must have gone straight between the stumps. It was terribly close. The keeper Steve Rickson absolutely bamboozled by that because McDermott dug it in. There was no bounce. The ball didn't get up at all. It just whizzed past that off stump. Good shot. Beautiful stroke from Viv Richards. Three for 93. And uh, Richards helping himself, or at least 15 runs coming from the last over. Another splendid stroke. Three glorious shots from these two players already in partnership. Two of them from Lloyd, a cover drive, and then that straight drive off O'Donnell. And Richards picking McDermott up over mid-on. The big cat gets hold of him, and what a great shot, a beautiful shot. A third man fine, a third man square, and he buys that position. Beautifully played, Clive Lloyd. Good boundary for Clive Lloyd. He smashed that one away behind point. Dermot with that extra pace of his, just giving a little bit of room outside off stump. He went right over the top of it. Got that away beautifully, beautifully played. 
Then up the fieldsman and they'll pick up three. Richard stumbles, but rooting go. No word he's a fine athlete. Stumbled at the non-strikers end going back to the third, but really took off like a greyhound when things become a bit desperate. Oh, what a shot! What a beautiful shot! 11 runs off the over. A man of this pace, he just lofted him down the ground. Beautifully played. Three for 119. Lloyd taking striker. Donald is the bowler. Oh, there it goes. This man out there, but it's going to clear him. Over the fence he goes. Clive Lloyd at his best. Simon O'Donnell becoming just a little frustrated. Didn't get in short. And that's what happens when you do to a man of the stature of Clive Lloyd. Straight over the top, six runs. Bennett to Lloyd. He's after Bennett. What a shot. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Got onto the front foot and he slashed him through points. The crowd almost stunned into silence by that glorious shot. He doesn't waste any time whatsoever. Not even prepared to have a look at Bennett. Past the crowd at the Gabba. Seeing a feast of batting at the moment. He goes for it. Finds a gap at square leg and that's four more. Making cricket look easy. It's not as easy as all that. Used his feet and whipped it over square leg. 11 runs from this over of Murray Bennett. Richards just won two paces down the track. Flips it away over square leg. Yep. Graham Wood at deep cover as the 150 comes up for the West Indies. This has been a really useful partnership for the West Indies. They play so well together, these two. Richards on 36, Lloyd on 38. And that's hit magnificently. Absolutely no chance there for the man almost straight at to deep mid-off. And uh, that is the official attendance figure, 22,012. It's not quite as big as the crowd that attended this match years ago it's the West Indies against Australia and that's gone way over mid on just missing the the press box and the scorers box here and going well back into the crowd what a shot this is Have a look at the power just outside off stump and uh, the pose there is Vivian Richards simply hits through the line and it goes miles down the ground. Beautiful straight hit for six. In the air and just clearing David Boone. be out well taken at mid on by Alan Border and Richards out just one short of his 50 and he doesn't seem too bothered about it in fact he's been in a very relaxed mood here at the Gabba this weekend it's a good catch by Alan Border he catches these over the top of his head very well we've already seen him make one good one this season Have a look at this the ball going away from him there and uh, no trouble at all, very safe pair of hands. And that brings to an end a very lively 46 from the West Indian vice captain. 49, correct? And uh, he's our court border, Bold Hog, four for 172. Hog comes in to bowl to Logie. A beautiful shot, very strong through the covers. Just with a flick of the wrist there. Gus Logie beats Graham Wood at point. It's four for 181. And 
and that'll be a boundary. And that brings up Clive Lloyd's 50. Second in two days for him at the Gabba. And he hasn't been dismissed this weekend. An appeal there for a catch down leg side. And Gus Logie is on his way. Well taken by Steve Rickson. And a well-earned wicket there for Simon O'Donnell. Well, uh, the cause may be lost, but Simon O'Donnell is still fighting that ball down the leg side. As I said earlier, his direction later on with the older ball in. And Logie was walking before the umpire's finger went up. Five for 1.88. David Boone is the bowler from Tasmania. Geoffrey Dujon takes strike. And there it is. There it is. Victory to the West Indies by five wickets. That's one minute earlier than their victory over Sri Lanka yesterday. Well, that was a very, very conclusive victory for the West Indians. And what a marvellous weekend they've had. They've given us some great cricket, particularly in the batting from Clive Lloyd and Vivian Richards. Two super partnerships. The first against Sri Lanka and then against the Australians after Craig McDermott had broken through with those two wickets. The final scorecard, Desmond Haynes 46 from 67 balls, Viv Richards 49 from 62 after he'd struggled early on a little bit against McDermott and then took the long handle to him and Clive Lloyd 52 in 61 balls to go with those three run outs. Five for 195 and the bowling figures, Lawson, well he bowled much better than that, 10 overs, one maiden, none for 35. Hogg one for 41, O'Donnell two for 47 over five runs per over and McDermott broke through bowling very, very fast to take those two wickets. Bennett expensive, three overs for 21, and Boone just finishing off the match with no wicket for five. Well, a few moments after the game was concluded and uh, the two captains went down, they were standing with Tony Gregg. Thank you, Richie. Well, once again, the Australian Cricket Board have allocated $5,000 for the Spencer Hedges World Series Cup match out of that kitty. And, uh, of course, $3,000 goes to Clive Lloyd for winning the game. And uh, I have a great amount of pleasure to tell you that you've also taken away the man of the match. Good, that uh, gold goblet and another check. <laughs> and I just distinctly get the feeling that you're after that motor car as well. Oh, I think I'm... No, I think it'd probably be somebody else that would play a little bit more off today. <laughs> great performance today by the West Indies. Those of us watching it thought that that was one of the best performances in the field that we've seen in a one-day match, perhaps ever. Uh, yes, it was one of our better efforts, really. Um, we weren't so good in Melbourne, but... Um, I think we sort of looked a little bit be better in, um, down in Devonport, it was, I think. And Hobart, sorry. And uh, <laughs> I think it's much even better he uh, here, really. And you've decided to make a comeback in the covers? Yes, well, we, as they said, we put the, we put the older fellow Garner and slip, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I moved into the covers. It's going to be a bit hard for you to justify leaving Gus Logie out of the side because he makes a huge difference in the field and is also playing pretty well. Yes, um, Gus has just been unlucky, really, in the last mm -hmm. couple of months. Um, but I think he, he would get the games that, that, that's due to him shortly. Um, he does make a difference. If he's very quick, really, he comes in from the covers, you know, rather sharp. And um, he's, you know, he saves probably 30, 40 runs really every time, which is, you know, a bonus for us. Congratulations on your performance today. Thank you very much. Right, well, Alan Border's been good enough to come down and collect uh, the uh, the other check. Bad luck, Alan. That wasn't a, wasn't a great performance by Australia today. No, very bad. Do you think that you've got to um, perhaps consider getting back to the to the format that you got back to before, where you use perhaps vessels and yourself as a bowler and perhaps have that little bit of extra batting? Well, it's a possibility. It's just uh, at the moment uh, things aren't really working out as we'd hoped, and uh, that's something that we'll have to sit down and discuss because we've. You know, a long way to go before we can beat the West Indies. So, you know, we just uh, obviously got to sit down, discuss a few things that are going wrong, and uh, obviously, hopefully, come up with the right combination. Well, they are a great side, and I mean, of course, you're not going to be able to beat them. It's, it's pretty tough. But it seems that we're getting back to one or two of those problems we had last year, um, when we weren't quite scoring enough runs. Yeah. And uh, I mean, is, is there any way you can see out of that? Well, in both games, uh, we've scored 240 uh, earlier games, and then today. Um, some poor batting in the middle, really, so those run-outs didn't help. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have thought, you know, we could have got to 220, even though the wicket uh, was fairly lively early on. But we got off to a reasonable start and should have got 220-plus, or would have given us a bit of a chance. But, 
as it's turned out, 190 is nowhere near enough right. against them. OK, well, bad luck today. I suppose perhaps you'd better get in the nets and you'd get those left-off <laughs> spinners going. <laughs> well, I've got to do something. Right. Thanks, Thanks for Tony. coming down. Right, that's all from down here. Back to you, Rich. Thanks, Tony. And uh, what a tremendous effort it was this weekend by the West Indians, taking four points to give them eight in all in the Benson Hedges World Series Cup table. Australia languishing there on two and Sri Lanka below the Australians. So the next match between West Indies and Australia on Tuesday at the SCG. A day-night match, vital for the Australians to get their confidence back. They generally play very well in uh, night time down there and this will be a very stern test for them. Good night. <laughs>